Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mr. Chris with infotainment.com. Today we are back in our uh, 2021 Ford F-150 and we're going to be doing a 8 inch to 12 inch conversion. We're going to be installing the SYNC 4 system on our truck and I'm going to show you how to, get, how to get that done. So let's get into the install. All right, so where you're gonna to wanna to start is right around the radio bezel. You got this um, small trim that's going all the way around. That will just pop off if you pull on it. You may need to use a panel tool if you have one accessible. But it's just held in with a bunch of um, retaining clips going all the way around. And we'll set that aside. Once you get that piece off, you can come up to the top here. In this little pocket up here, you have a a um, rubber base pad. Once you remove that, you'll, exp you'll see uh, the two holes here. That's where you'll see the two seven millimeter screws up top. You'll have to take those out. And it's kind of tight in there, so if you got power tools, it's probably not gonna work unless you have a angle of some sort like I do. But if you use just a regular ratchet, you'll be able to get in here no problem. Also for this installation, it's not required, but it'll definitely help you out if you have a little magnet handy, especially if you end up dropping any of these um, seven millimeter screws that we're gonna be taking out. There's quite a few that need to come out. All right, so next we're gonna remove this trim going across the bottom of the radio. When you get to the center, be kind of careful. There's not a lot of meat here. You can. If you pull this the wrong way, you can definitely crack this. There we go, and we'll set this aside. All right, so the next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift our center console and we're gonna pull off these side plates here. And to pull that off, you basically push it outwards away from the center console. And once you have it pushed out enough, you can pull it back and that'll free it from the, uh, from the center console there. We'll do that on both sides. All right, we can set that aside. All right, so next up, we're gonna remove our climate control cluster. We're not gonna reuse this bezel, but we will need to remove all of the attachments that are attached to it. So we're gonna pull this whole thing out, we're gonna set it aside, um, as well as the radio bezel. We'll need to reuse this um, volume and media controls here onto our new bezel. So we'll take these both to the bench, swap everything over. When we come back to reinstall, it'll be all into the new uh, bezel that's included with your kit. So from here we're going to remove five screws that are holding on our radio bezel. Alright, now that we got the four screws out, there's actually one more. It's kind of hidden. It's off to the left. It's kind of behind your gauge cluster bezel. You don't have to remove this, but I am going to pull it out a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to get my little panel tool. You can pop down the center. And this little side lip here, you can pop out a little bit. This is basically all you have to do is you have to pull it back just slightly and that'll give you access to that seven mil that's inside there. All right, now we can remove the four seven millimeter screws holding on our climate control bezel. All right, we can just pull this out and we'll unplug all of these plugs and we'll set this aside. All right, we'll put this on our workbench and we'll come to that later. All right, now we can remove the radial or the screen bezel here. This just unsnaps and we'll kind of have to fish it around on the driver's side here. And we have some plugs back here 
for our, uh, for our controls on the top side here, we'll have to unplug this also. And we'll unplug these bottom plugs and we can set this aside. Once we transfer over all of the controls, we're not gonna need these anymore. All right, so now that we have our screen exposed here, you'll notice that you have four seven millimeter screws on the sides of the screen on the uh, mounting bracket. Once you pull those out, this is not gonna come off. The reason why we took these two seven millimeter screws out on top is because we have to pop this top cover off. There's two hidden screws that are actually going down behind the screen. So you're gonna need an extension to get down there, but we'll go ahead and pop this up. This is just held in with more clips and we have a plug right in the center here that we'll unplug. And that clears up or frees up our area here that we can now access those two seven millimeter screws back here. All right, so right behind the screen, straight down, you have these two. They're kind of hard to see unless you're looking straight down from the top. But you have two seven mils, there's one. And this is where it comes in handy to have your magnet especially reach down there and, and pull that guy out. All right, now we can take the four seven mils out. And now our, our screen is free. We can disconnect that one plug on the back and we won't need to use this anymore. Okay, next we're gonna have to remove the A-pin module, which is mounted below where the screen was. Um, you got a bunch of connectors on here uh, with plugs. We can disconnect everything because we will be removing this. This uh, main wiring harness here has a little button right in the center and the rest is just a lever that will push the whole connector out of there. Everything should be pretty easy to, to remove. You shouldn't need anything fancy to remove all of this stuff and once we have all the wires disconnected we can go ahead and pull the whole module out it's three t20 torque screws that are holding it on all right and we won't be using this anymore either so we can set this aside all right now we can grab our sync 4 module that was included with your kit and we'll just put that in the same location that our old module was in All right, now we can proceed with plugging in all of our connectors. Um, what we're going to omit from plugging in uh, that was in the vehicle prior to the new installation is this blue line here. The one that is included with your kit is gonna be replacing that one. So we'll plug that one in. This is gonna route, uh, route up to our screen. We'll just kind of let that sit there until we're ready for it. And we can start to plug in all of the remaining lines. And when you get to the main connector here, you're gonna to wanna to grab the included harness, the one that is labeled 12 inch display. This one is gonna go up to the screen as well. All the others can get zip tied along this harness here. This is basically just a pass-through harness. So we'll plug in our factory connector into our new wiring. Same way we pulled it off, sliding it down, have that little lever off to the side. And uh, as it sinks in there, that lever will pull up into the top position and lock it in place. If you can't pull it apart, you know you made a good connection. And we'll reinstall this side onto our SYNC 4 module as well. All right, so from here, we're gonna go to the bench. We're gonna get all of our factory parts off, um, swapped over onto our new bezels, and we'll come back for the reinstallation. All right, so on the bench here, you can see we have our 12 inch screen and our old bezel. Now, a bunch of this stuff is gonna get swapped over to here. The media controls down here will get swapped over to our new climate control piece here. As you can see, the old one doesn't have a spot for the uh, for the volume and everything. So we're gonna swap over everything 
and we can head back into the truck for reinstall. Also, with our new screen, you'll notice we have a button up here that wasn't in our truck to begin with. So this, because it has three knockouts, you're gonna get this third one covered, just so you don't have an open hole here. That's not gonna give you a feature, it's just gonna cover that hole, so something to keep in mind. And everything that's not present on our new screen will have to be swapped over. So from the back, you'll see how everything is kind of held on and you should be able to pop everything free pretty easily. Might be a good idea to have a flathead on hand. And like the AC vents, they have these reverse type clips where you have to pull up on them to release it keep some pressure on there pulling pulling the AC vent away from the clips and you'll be able to remove the AC vent And the last piece here is our volume controls. And this is held in with two six millimeter bolts or screws. We'll take those out. As well as some clips, just like the AC vent. There we go. And we will populate our new bezel. All right, so this is ready to go. We'll grab our climate control bezel and we'll get these parts swapped over as well. All right, now we'll go ahead and reinstall all of our previously removed climate control parts. And all the six millimeter screws that you pulled out are all the same for the volume and the climate control uh, module, so you won't get any of these mixed up. All right, when you're all said and done, it should look nice and complete. Now we can head back to the truck and reinstall everything. All right, before we throw the screen back up in here, I'm gonna clean up these wires like I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna throw some zip ties around stuff. And uh, I'm gonna get rid of the factory screen line here that is not being used anymore. There's two little Christmas tree type clips that hold this on. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that out. One's kind of in there. There we go. And where that was snapped into, you can see our new line here has the same connectors on there, uh, the same re uh, retaining clips. We'll go ahead and pop it in to the same location to secure it. So now we have our new line here and we'll finish up by zip tying all the other excess that we have down here.
All right, now we're ready for our screen. So we can grab this here. And on the back side, you'll see the two connectors where you're gonna attach the pink line and that other line, the power line right there. And when we slide this back in, we're gonna have to put those two seven millimeter screws that were internal back here. All right, before we set this up in there, we're gonna make sure to plug in all of our connectors that we removed earlier, except for that single one that's gonna be dropped down for our volume control. So this one's actually gonna run down to the new climate control area uh, where it can plug in so we have volume control. Okay, so like we removed earlier, this driver side had that lip that folds underneath your gauge cluster here. You're gonna have to kind of fish that around there so you can get the whole bezel nice and flush. There we go. And once that's snapped into place, you can reattach the four seven millimeter screws and then pull your gauge cluster bezel out and put that fifth screw in as well. All right, once you get that fifth screw in, you can snap your gauge cluster bezel back in place. And now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall those two seven millimeter screws that were behind the screen. And since it's so deep in there, this is where that magnet will come in handy again. What I'm gonna do is just stick the bolt at the end of the magnet. I'm gonna reach down into the back. It'll get me at least into the threaded hole and then I can slide this off and this will be in the right position for me to screw that in. All right, now we can grab that top cubby cover and we'll stick the wiring and the cubby back in here. And we can reinstall the two seven millimeter screws up on top here. The screws that are removed everywhere in here, they're all the same. So there's no need to really know where they went because they'll all fit. All right, now we're ready for our climate control cluster and we'll make sure to plug everything in, including the media controls here, which is that line that we kind of pulled down from the top. All right, with everything plugged in, we can slide this into place. And then we can reinstall the four seven mils that came out from there as well. All right, now we're ready for the side um, of the center console, these trim pieces. So we'll open up our center console again and slide these into place. You'll have to push it forward and you'll have to make sure that the, the little alignment pins back here, that they line up to where they need to be, otherwise it won't fit right. There we go. Once you have it lined up, it'll be kind of tight up top and then you can just snap it in going towards the center. We'll do the same thing on the passenger side. All right, now we're ready to return all of the remaining trim pieces. We got the one that goes around the key cylinder here. We'll pop this into place. And lastly, we have our screen bezel. We'll snap back into place. And that's pretty much it. That wraps up the install. Let's test it out. All right, let's turn it on. Got that nice Ford splash screen. All 
All right, and you can see what a huge difference from our previous radio. It's just this massive screen that you see here. Um, being that it is a wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay radio, let's test that out and pair my phone to it. And Android Auto. And there I am, it picked me up immediately. Let me see what we got here. All right, so if we go into the Android Auto menu, you can see we have all of my apps in here straight on the screen really cool feature to have if you have apple carplay or android auto and you're using it wired um, this is a huge upgrade now you can keep your phone in your pocket everything will sync wirelessly and uh, you'll be on your way so if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more just like it head back to infotainment.com if you want more information about the upgrade i just installed be sure to check the description below thank you for watching